pick. But the economy is shifting. There's this new thing, it's delight. That is what the new economy is. Because of you, because of what you guys are doing with code. And I wanna talk about my own delight journey. We all have experiences, Amazon, Airbnb, Google Maps, uh, Khan Academy, I love Khan Academy, Netflix, Pandora, Uber, and Uber's a great example. Because what businesses have figured out is that delight is more powerful than huge marketing budgets. And how did I learn about Uber? Probably the same way you guys did. Someone grabbed me by, us, by the shoulders and said, dude, you're an idiot to take a cab. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I was in New York, and I was a little nervous because I had to catch my flight. It was like the 6 o'clock flight on a Friday, and if I didn't make it back, that meant I had to take a Saturday morning flight. So I was a little nervous, and I said, hey, I'm a risk taker. So I pressed the button, and it was amazing. Super high density of Uber in New York, if you haven't used it. Like 30 seconds later, this dude pulls over, opens the door, very Chris, and I, mean, I was taken aback by it, actually. <laughs> and then I got to the airport, and I'm used to the police dude yelling at me while we're doing the credit card thing. And instead of that, I didn't even have to do a fist bump. I could just walk out of the town car, nothing. All I had to do is say five stars, and it's a delightful experience. And what amazes me is every time I take Uber, I have that same experiences. And the common thread of all those companies that rattled off, the common thread is actually they're doing it with code, and they're doing it at speed, and they're doing it at scale. Speed and scale, super important elements of delight. And I think part of our mission over the next couple days at ChefConf is to help bring others along into the delight economy. Because while many of you are here, many of you have yet to make the leap, or many others, I should say. And I want to talk about Volvo for a second, because I think Volvo is an interesting case study, and you think of them as a manufacturing company. I would actually argue Volvo is not any longer a manufacturing company. Volvo is a software company. So I know about Volvo. My wife drives a XC60. And it's a pretty delightful car, actually. And there's tons of code in it. In fact, it's drive-by-wire, meaning the steering wheel isn't connected physically with the front wheels. It's done through software. Uh, it has in-dash maps. You can pair, like many cars, you can pair through Bluetooth with your phone. In fact, if you're about to hit somebody, the software will take over and full brake the car to a stop if I'm about to hit a pedestrian or another car. Think about that. Talk about experiences exceeding expectations, right? Talk about a delightful experience not killing somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so this car, is actually, this car is actually loaded with code. And yet, you can tell also that Volvo hasn't fully embraced that they are a software company. And here's two little examples where they kind of, they fumble a little bit on the delight thing. So my wife upgraded her iPhone to 7.1. And guess what? The Bluetooth pairing broke. And now you got to take it to the dealer and they got to update the software. Or even worse, I got in the mail five DVDs which represent the map update. This is a one-year-old car, by the way. A map update. Now, I'm guessing that the actual data that's different on what they sent me versus what's you know, parked in storage in the trunk of the car is like 0.5%, right? And you know what the instructions say on how to update this? First of all, you got to leave the car running so the battery doesn't die, <laughs> right? Yeah, we'll get this. And then it says, it might take five hours. <laughs> Five hours. So I'm picturing what my neighbors think when I'm, the car's running for five hours, because I don't want to do it in the garage. <laughs> it warns you, don't do it in the garage. So, so I'm sitting you know, in front of my house with the car running for five hours, feeding DVDs like one every hour and 10 minutes into it, right? It sucks. So they don't quite get it. And the reason, and I don't mean to pick on Volvo, I think they actually have great product. But the reason is I have a lot of discussions with business, um, business leaders, with IT leaders, and many of them, when I get into things like continuous delivery, they say, well, this doesn't apply to me, right? This applies to the web innovators. This doesn't apply to my business. 
Well, damn it, I want continuous delivery in my Volvo, in my wife's Volvo. I want if there's a software update, it automatically comes from the sky and it happens real time and they think about my car like a node in their network and I don't want to stuff CDs and DVDs for five hours with the car running in front of my house. <laughs> so part of our job, I think, is as missionaries to help bring others along in this journey that you guys have already been through. And I do see evidence that companies are getting this in a meaningful way. Take, take Citibank. I was very fortunate to be at a dinner recently, and I sat next to the head of global banking for Citi, huge organization, over 100,000 employees. And I was kind of cool, because he's talking to me about Delight, right? It's kind of our pitch. And what he says, and you realize he totally gets it, he says no amount of marketing that we spend, no amount of marketing, can actually exceed that real experience that a consumer has either in our branch or increasingly online. Online is the channel where they're communicating to their customers. No experience, no marketing thing can exceed that experience of what they have and it's magnified with social media because that experience that a consumer has, good or bad, will immediately be tweeted or blogged or Facebooked and that is so much more powerful. What you hear from someone you know is so much more powerful than marketing. So we see delight replacing marketing. And it's this group, it's you in this room, you guys are driving that delight economy with code, with automation, with DevOps, with continuous delivery. And thank you, with lots and lots of chef. <laughs> And hopefully we're going to talk about all those things over the next couple of days. That's what this conference is about, helping you guys deliver delight. That's why we chose it for our banner, for our t-shirts. So let me, let me talk a little bit about what's happening in the chef universe. So first of all, I have to share some very sad news if you didn't hear it. Mitch Hill passed away in December of last year. And there's many things I could say about Mitch, but I think his oldest son said it best at his memorial. He said, my dad is a badass. <laughs> and, and if you knew Mitch, he knew in fact he was a badass at every single thing that he did. And the company, Chef, we want to memorialize Mitch, so we've created a scholarship in computer science at Western Washington University in Mitch's name Western Washington is a place where the Hill family has very close connections. In my last conversation with Mitch, I asked him simply, what can I do to help? And if you know Mitch, you know he's a guy of very few words, very compact with his statements. And Mitch said, make Chef happen. Make Chef happen. And I'm super pleased to be here today and tell you Chef is happening. And you can see it happening with our community growth. We now have over 5 million downloads of Chef, something like 300% year-over-year growth of our community size. You can see it with our cookbooks, with our content, something like, this blows me away, over 400,000 cookbooks a month are downloaded from our site. You can see it with the quality of our customers, many of which are sitting out here and are gonna be presenting over the next couple days. You can see it with our partnerships, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft, HP, Juniper, IBM, Google, BMC, VMware. It's a who's who list of this industry. You can see it with our sales growth, 188% year over year growth, nearly double our closest competitor. You can see it in an external belief in Chef, we raised $32 million, nearly doubling our outside investment last year. And we had great validation this week. I don't know if you know the, the right scale uh, piece on state of the cloud. It's awesome. They had a whole section and it said, chef leading and configuration management. And this is a change from 2013. Chef grew in the last year and nearly double the rate of our close competitor. We lead the category and overall share and what I thought was super cool, they break down four subcategories. Chef has always been really strong with developers. That's not a surprise to us. 
but was a surprise across all four developers, IT operations, large companies, small companies. They had Chef, Leader Share, and all of those. And thank you. It's because of this group, because of you, because of what you've done out there. <laughs> So listen, it is happening. Chef is happening. And we have emerged as a clear leader in web scale IT. In addition to all these sort of external things that you can see and that we've talked about, there's been a whole bunch going on in our universe that we haven't talked about, especially in the development world. And there's a couple of themes that are really important to us that we've been focusing on. The first is simplification and accessibility. We want to make it easier for you to spread Chef both inside your own organization and also to organizations that have yet to embrace Chef. Super, super important focus for us. The other is features. We want to push a lot more features both in open source Chef and in enterprise Chef this year. And speed. We've talked a lot about speed inside the company. And I think there's two reasons speed's so important. First of all, it actually is, I think, what you're really getting from us that you deliver to your own organizations. It's speed. The second thing it means to me, and means to the company, is we need to be better at this. We need to push stuff out more quickly. We need to get features to you more quickly. We need to get fixes, bugs, all that done at speed. It's a big focus for us. You'll see a new community site this year. You'll see Chef DK later today. You'll see Chef Metal. You'll see us do neat things with Burke Shelf. You'll see us deliver the best container workflow in the industry. You'll see a revamped download process from us. And we have a couple other things we're going to announce later this year that we still have up our sleeve. We'll ship more features this year than we ever have in our history. So how did we get here? How did we all get here in this intimate gathering of future leaders of the delight economy? And I want to talk about where that came from. And by the way, I started in IT. That was my first job. And let me tell you, back then, IT was not really about delight. <laughs> it was about infrastructure, yes. It was about a lot of fixed stuff. You know, get over here and fix my fill-in-the-blank email, servers down, storage, website performance, lots of running around, or project work. And there was two things about all those projects, all those IT projects that I touched and I saw. And first of all, they all took a long time. They were slow. And when you delivered them after all this hard work, you know what? The business always thought it sucked. <laughs> super, super, super bad, right? And if you think about it, if you think about developing a Petri dish to become a leader, like that was an awful place to be a leader. You're either running around fixing things for other people or you're doing these projects that took a long time and in the end didn't make anyone happy. And really this started to change. It started to change with the web innovators, right? That's where this redefinition of IT began to happen. That's where the delight economies come from. That's where DevOps came from. That's where Chef was born. That's where this thing started to happen. That's where delivering software at speed and scale came out of. It came out of the Amazons, the Googles, the Facebooks, the Yahoos, who are many of which are in this room. And then it became contagious. It was so different than what people had experienced in the past. It became contagious. And that contagion caught in the enterprise, and it started with the online groups. And in many cases, the reason was simply survival, right? Amazon had their boot on the whole retail industry, right on the throat. And so if you were a Best Buy or Target or Nordstrom, out of sheer survival, you began to adopt these same practices. You brought DevOps in. You brought new tooling in. And then it was pretty cool. And all of a sudden, like that old dynamic that we talked about in IT really started to shift. And then it wasn't just the online groups. Other places wanted as well. And that's really what web scale IT is about. 
It's the next step in what's happening about IT. It's not just doing these practices with the online teams in the enterprise. It's doing it across IT. And we will see web scale IT take this industry by storm over the next 24 months. And web scale IT is simply bringing those best practices from those web innovators, from those web innovators both inside the web industry and inside the enterprise, pulling those into, into IT. DevOps, doing everything through APIs, doing things at speed, doing things at scale. And you're seeing this happen. It's not just on the fringes. One of our financial services companies, one of the largest global brands who we've worked with their online team, with their cloud team, we're now talking to their operations team. They're talking about bringing 4,500 apps that have in some cases have taken them 30 years to develop. 4,500 applications all into cloud and in the web, and they're talking about doing it over the next 24 months. It's an extraordinary project they have under the way. And it's because the pioneering that this group has done in this room. Web scale IT is IT. And here's the purpose of the new IT that's emerging. It's delight. It's delight delivered through code. Let's talk about ChefConf and what's going to happen over the next couple days. So if I were sitting in your seat, which hopefully in a few minutes I will be, if I was sitting in your seat, I'd think to myself, how can I spend a lot less calories on infrastructure? I think IT becomes a lot less about infrastructure over the coming years. How can I automate everything? How can I push DevOps across my organization? And how can I deliver innovation and by the way, when I mean innovation, I mean software, I mean code. How can I deliver innovation at speed and scale across my organization? We got some great talks, some great speakers, some great sessions. Jason Stowe from Cycle Computing. If you haven't listened to Jason, I'm always just super inspired by the work that those guys do. It's a window in what IT is going to look like in the future. And by the way, what Jason is doing and his team that is the definition of web scale IT. We have Justin Arbuckle, chief architect at GE Capital. He's going to be talking about GE's own journey in DevOps. We have Rob Cummings from Nordstrom talking about their DevOps roller coaster and delivering speed. Jez Humble, the father of continuous delivery, super fortunate to have him here. He's going to be talking about his journey with DevOps. So let me finish with you, with this group of future leaders in the delight economy. We just finished a fascinating research piece on IT professionals, on developers. And first of all, the stereotypes are bullshit. They're not right. And what's amazing is, first of all, 91%, 91% of this group is considered to be the most important asset inside an organization. Think about that. Think about that change in IT. 94% believe that you will have a significant impact on the private sector. I would posit you already have. It's already happening. So our job, your job, is delight. And Chef's job is to give you the platform to do your job. You're the future leaders of this emerging delight economy. I appreciate you coming. Thank you. Have a great session. I'd like to bring Mandy out to show you some cool stuff. Thank you.